This is the Oklahoma Flying Aces flight plan. First one for the 2021 season. I am Tom Nelson. We're joined today by Richard Davis, the general manager and head coach of the Flying Aces, and Kevin Brisky with the Stride Bank Center, the GM of the Stride Bank Center. And uh, the reason we're here today is just to talk to you a little bit about the future of the Oklahoma Flying Aces and the fact that while there might not be a season this year, it's, it's been a crazy season. <laughs> <laughs> what it was. There will be a season in 2021 starting in March, and that's why we're here today and to talk about what really what the Flying Aces need from the city of Enid and from the fans and from the people who live here to have a successful season in 2021. And first of all, Coach, thank you so much for stopping by. Kevin, thank you as well. Coach, I'll start with you. First of all, we found out this week, the, the second week of, ju of Jan uh, June, that the season was going to be postponed yeah. till next year. I mean, it was a decision pretty obvious, I guess, really. It, well, I guess it was obvious to some. I will say that our league, our board of directors, our owners, um, we really had hoped to get a season in, including even a, a half a season or yeah. a limited schedule. We went through a number of those scenarios. Uh, you know, um, <clears throat> the Enid News and Eagle did a great job with their article explaining that uh, a little bit uh, yesterday. So we tried. We held on, and we wanted a season. We wanted it for our fans and our players, et cetera. But there was just too many darn operational problems. Kevin played a really a critical role for us of giving us information from other buildings around the country, and it just got to be too many moving parts that we could not secure for sure a playable window. So we had to, we had to cancel it. I would imagine um, for the fans, first of all, it's a league that is fan-driven which means you've got to draw fans in. And you never know how many people are still afraid to get out and be in, in big gatherings. And another thing, Kevin, I'll ask you about this, the fact that you may have to have the social distancing in the building and knock down your seating capacity. And that's something we did talk about as this was coming together. You know, if we were to play in June, July, August, what would that seating look like? I think as we get towards September, it's going to open up quite a bit. But right now, we are going to be at a smaller capacity. And while for our facility, the capacity we could have been at probably would have worked, there were a lot of other uh, facilities in the league that didn't have as much uh, you know, leeway as we have to, um, to work in fans and, and to work in bigger crowds. Uh, so a lot of those other cities had outbreaks, uh, had concerns where they couldn't fit enough people to make it work. And I think that's something that, whether it be for football or any event coming up, not just in Oklahoma, but across the country, we're going to see play a major factor. And, and like you said, I think the big thing is what people need to understand is a league like this, there's no huge TV deals out yeah. there. ESPN yeah. isn't coming out and paying millions upon billions of dollars. Which is why the major leagues want to get yes. back. They can play without fans. Yeah. Right. And that, that's just not an option for uh, this type of uh, league. And that's why you saw a lot of the minor leagues cancel immediately because they knew they couldn't play with fans. There's no revenue in there for them. And, uh, you know, that's why, like you said, the majors can do it. Um, if we couldn't have the fans, it, it wouldn't work. And I think, you know, they ended up ultimately, you know, waiting as long as they could, which I think was the right yep. decision, yep. to make sure – they couldn't get it in for not just the players, but the fans, everybody involved. And uh, unfortunately, it had to cancel, but I think it's the right decision. Um, and I think it's going to make things, you know, people more even excited for when it comes back in 2021. When I look at it really in the process, Kevin played a big role for our, in our entire league, really. You know, being in the building management industry, he was getting a lot of feedback from tons of buildings. And so he, he allowed us to stay educated as owners uh, about what the moving parts were. And so... You know, Kevin, what he just said is the only way I, we can look at it now is, well, we got a great jump start on 2021 and, yeah. and uh, all the work that was put in for 2020, we'll just we'll just use that as a ramp up and ready to go for 21. Kevin, what are some of the parameters that you've had to uh, deal with uh, more recently? He said things may change, open up a little more in September. Mm -hmm. But if there were games played right now and we're talking the second week of June, what would those parameters be? The biggest thing is the social distancing and making sure that there is um, spacing between families, between groups of people that have spent time together um, so that we keep everyone safe. I think that's the biggest one that, that affects the general public. Everything else that we're doing behind the scenes, we can do and make it happen. The extra disinfecting, sanitizing, uh, the way people enter and exit the building. It would take a lot of patience on people because it may take a little longer to get everyone in and get everyone in safely. Um, but I think the biggest thing that affects capacities is that social distance requ requirement. Um, we're in, a, we're in an interesting situation here, which makes it great for the Flying Aces, is that 
we have the smallest building capacity out of any building yep. in the league. Good and bad. <laughs> bad, you can't fit in as many yeah. people. And when you have to social distance, it does cut down your capacity. But great, which if people came to a game in 2019, they know you're you're part right of the action. Yep. You are right there. If you're in that front row, I mean, how many yeah. people got players in their lap um, <laughs> on, a, on a regular basis? It makes it that much more fun. Or in the case of in the case of TJ, case of TJ Runs, you yeah. end up on the field. <laughs> Shout out to Tiger Pond. It's <laughs> yeah. a way to get those sponsors yeah. in hey, right there. Uh, TJ had to work for that one, so he earned it. But okay, Coach, tell me a little bit about the interaction you've had with the players that you've had with the players here in the past month or so when they realize that uh, there may not be a season. Uh, the, the, probably the short version of the long story is I'm heartbroken for them because, uh, you, A, we have a really close bunch of guys. Um, our kids fought through little adversity last year. We built a team of rookies. Um, mm -hmm. We took the the um, long path to building this, we wanted to lay the foundation. We knew we'd, we'd take our licks early, if you will, and by the end of the season, as you all both witnessed, we were, we were right there with the best of the, in the league. We were excited to come back. And the thing is, Tom, as you've been around athletes your whole life, people forget they've just spent 12 months of their lives toiling in little gyms and hot and sweaty, yeah. you know, getting their workouts in, getting themselves ready to to be able to play at a high level this year. Nobody sees those workouts. Nobody sees those hours spent um, getting after it. But Coach Davis knows. Yeah. And, and so <clears throat> I feel really bad for him. But we did stay in touch. Every I, I tried to keep them as informed as I could along the way. Um, I feel bad for him. But <clears throat> the good news is I do think we had a close bunch. I think most of these guys – are just going to roll right through. <clears throat> excuse me. Are going to roll right through, and they're going to. We're going to stick together. We'll lose a few because yeah. of life changes, etc. But I think our crew is going to get, get back in here, be a, a substantially the same guys, and we're going to be ready to go in 21. I think the heartbreaking thing about it is the window of opportunity for a professional football player is not very long. It is not. They're losing a year. A full year. Um, I can attest to the fact that we had young men that were in this, the, in the system, the evaluated boards, not just in the NFL, but we had at least three that were very seriously being uh, considered for contracts in the Canadian Football League. That's all on hold, and those are life-changing opportunities for these yeah. guys. So I feel bad for them, but um, you know we've just got to hang in there together and, and uh, know that uh, God's got a plan for us all, and we'll, we'll come out of this and, and do it right the next time. Let's look ahead now. Let's look ahead yeah. toward the 2021 season. As we said, it will kick off uh, next March. And God willing, let's get through this and yes. get on down the road and put this last few, few months behind us and not say the word pandemic anymore. <laughs> but let's talk about the future because right now, the off season starts now. now. And, and that means it's time to ramp up for next year with uh, sponsorships and season ticket sales and individual ticket sales and all that. That's so very, very important. And the sooner you get after it, the better. No question. Well, we started it today. Yeah. Um, not only with this, this uh, opportunity here, but this morning I took our first corporate meeting for 2021. And I can tell you we're really excited to announce that uh, we have a new partner, uh, Downtown Threads. Um, is going to be our new merchandising partner. They're, they're bringing a ton of stuff to the table for us. Uh, um, they're going to create some great new designs, already have created some great new designs. Uh, we'll have an online uh, store, a, a really cool website where people will be able to come in there. Uh, we'll have flash sales beginning as, as, as soon as next month. Um, no pressure on Brandy and crew <laughs> down there. But, but uh, we're actually really excited, and we think that adding – Andy, adding them is, is an example of the kind of growth we need. Mm -hmm, We're mm -hmm. committed. We're going to get there. We need more corporates to come on board. To be honest with you, we need, we need twice as many season ticket holders. I, I would think mm -hmm. that would be fair. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll talk about groups and fundraisers and all that. But it begins today. Um, it begins like any other normal season, our season ticket holders, uh, where you didn't have a season this year, we want you to stay with us, roll that thing over to 2021, uh, we'll save your seats, uh, we're going to reward you, incentivize you for that, your, your trust and your patience with us, um, and so we'll make it even bigger and better for you in 21. Uh, and, then, and then really, Tom, we need everybody to understand that Kevin touched on the fact that we're the smallest market, mm -hmm. you know. Well, one of the burdens of taking this risk of coming to the market we were, we are the smallest, 
we got to do the best in certain other areas. And we need more season ticket holders. We need more more mini packs. We're going to introduce that. Kevin brought that to us this year, uh, two and maybe three game mini packs. So we need people to buy in. We need our season ticket holders to go find us new season ticket holders. We need our group sales to pick up and, and all those kind of things. And that begins now. We're not going to wait till January. We're getting started today. I know, Kevin, your crew at the uh, Stride Bank Center uh, kind of have your finger on the pulse of some groups and things are beginning to percolate along pretty good going into this season. That's so important, getting those groups involved. Yeah, I, I think it is, and especially in minor league sports, that's really the, the way, you know, the formula works as far as uh, on a financial or business side of it is you need that huge group part. Um, I think these days, and the nice thing is with this season, it's only six you know, it's six home games, so it's not a huge commitment, so season tickets are still relevant. You get to some of the minor league teams where you have 40 yeah. home games, and season ticket holders, Can't it's not possible that, anymore. Yeah. I mean, with everything else going on. But with that said, said I mean, groups are a big part of what we do. Um, it's a great way to do fundraising, which um, yeah. the teams put together a great fundraising opportunity, uh, no matter what your group is. But also, you know, when you're looking for things to do socially, um, you look at, you know, Enid in general, there are certain things that, that you can do, but after a short list of four or five, you run out fairly quickly without doing the same thing over and over again. This is something completely new and different. Um, you know, really an opportunity that you don't get in most places. And for those groups that did come out in 2019, they had a blast. Yeah. Everyone who came out had yeah. a blast. I mean, if you're a youth group, just going on the field, being part of the high five line as the players are introduced, I mean, what an opportunity and what a memorable experience for a, a child to be out there with these football players that, I mean, they don't know who they are, but look up to them because they're wearing a jersey. Well, I think um, our largest group ever was scheduled for this year through yeah. the Boy Scouts. Yeah, we, we, had, we had worked on a thing with the Boy Scouts um, to bring out about two, 300 Boy Scouts to opening night, uh, do a sleepover on the field yeah. after the game, that was which is be cool, yeah. a really cool idea. I mean, I always regret it after I say it because I know who gets <laughs> stuck sleeping over and uh, <laughs> watching <laughs> the building and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, uh, it, it's things that we do. Um, but, you know, groups like that, uh, cool ways to, to get uh, people involved and and you know a lot of these groups are looking for things to do uh, and and we're a great opportunity for that the pricing is incredibly affordable yeah. and I mean an experience that you're never going to forget especially you know when we agreed to this boy it seems so long ago um, and it was only what a couple I, years ago yeah, not even full that <laughs> yeah yet, so. and and just we had this vision which in our minds was was really cool then we put it together and it was even cool I remember walking in that first day when everything's painted and everything's yeah. down and the field is set and it's just like this is amazing I can't believe this is actually happening and then watching the people out there for the first game and just the reaction yeah I mean I always like standing outside the building when people come out to to just kind of eavesdrop on their conversations and the amount of positive feedback we got from everyone leaving the building you just knew we had something here. And we still do, and unfortunately. We, still do. Yeah. we, you know, we have to take, a, like I think we were talking about before, and this is a mulligan, you know, we, <laughs> you know, we, we had a season that we thought was going to be a home run in 2020. Um, we're going to have to give it another try, not because of anything we did wrong, um, but because, like you said, the pandemic. And but we'll be better for it. It's, you yeah. Know, yeah. All this preparation that we spent, mm -hmm. you spent, your staff, yeah. you know, your, your staff, Kevin, doesn't get enough, mm -hmm. if you will, um, um, I don't know, they love these games a year ago. They, they love, had a yep. great time working those they games did. last year. But, but it, it creates a ton of work for them. You know, Aaron yeah. and Sean, yeah. Tim, yeah. Um, all of your staff, they were robbed of this opportunity mm -hmm. too because yeah. all of their hard work is pushed off for a year and people forget about that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So we're... I think this year we're going to jump in early. We're going to build that momentum. We're going to do things better. You know, fundraisers as an example... I'll just tell every all of our watchers and listeners out there, I think our fundraising plan is the least utilized. It's, it has the most potential. We have a really cool platform. So if you have a group that, that you think you can bring out to a game that is tied to a cause or a church group or any, any reason that you need to raise funds, uh, a volleyball team that wants to play in a tournament somewhere or whatever the case may be, Guys, we can build a group night where everybody that comes to our game under your group night, you get credit for that and you get money directly to you for that. It, and you got to remember in a, in a community like Enid, 
a lot of the folks that you would be asking to come to the come on, they're probably coming to one of the games anyway. So yeah. get them under your your group and make the money for it. I I, I really hope people will take us up on that this year because that will help us all grow. I think another key thing to to get across to people is that uh, sponsorships are so important, and the thing is. There are sponsorships for any price range. If you have 500 bucks, a couple of tickets, and you know maybe some little mention during the game, we can make that happen. If you've got $10,000 or five figures, I guarantee we can make that happen as well. We, you need to get as many people Absolutely. on the team as possible. There's no question. Kevin's committed to helping us. Um, guys, starting a franchise from scratch is tough. Oh, tell me and about so it. our first year, I will be the first to admit, we were, Kevin talked about the beautiful field and, you know, and all that on, he didn't say that we were still painting that sucker <laughs> hours before the opener. Um, if I ever open up a new franchise again, I, I hope one of you guys will run me over. Um, it was hard. It was, there was so much to do. And that's probably why it hurts all of us. We saw all that work. And, Tom, you were a critical part of helping me and our staff. You saw us fighting our way through. Mm -hmm. This year, we were ready to take advantage of all that experience, and it got delayed. But but if, if everyone sticks with us, brings two or three, four more folks with you next year, you're not going to regret it because our show's going to be better, our presentation's going to be better. And, oh, by the way, the football team that we had – we were going to be a considerably improved team. I've got to ask you, and I'm going to ask both of you this question. First of all, uh, Coach, with no games to play and no team to run for really for the past three or four months, what have you been doing during the pandemic? Uh, first of all, following your son who's <laughs> wrestling, I know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, you took the words out of my mouth, really, not from the wrestling, but being a, being a father first, yeah. a parent. Just worrying about your kids, worrying about what is – uh, an acceptable risk and, and what can they do and following the data, uh, burying down with Kev. We talked to I me mean, 20 times a week because we were bored, I guess, but uh, <laughs> um, being a dad first, um, trying to mi be mindful of the business and the next steps that we take and make. Um, and then frankly, just trying to stay in touch with the players, keep them informed uh, and, and really watch this unfold like yeah. we all did you know and so yeah. um once we as parents once we started to see this change the data i'm just kind mm -hmm. of a mm -hmm. numbers guy that we started to ease up and, and allow mm -hmm. our children to kind of take a little more uh steps towards normalcy and and so really i spent this time probably just like you your your father and a lot of time at home with the kids yeah yeah so it's it's yeah. all all good now. We're ready. We're ready to roll. I, I want to ask you, Kevin, before we get out of here, is, you know, what has been going on at the building since March? I mean, I know Chicago got concert. Every it got canceled. Mm. Every event you've had pretty much has gotten canceled. What were you guys doing during the downtime? Well, I mean, getting really getting the building prepared. It was a great opportunity. I mean, a lot of facilities do have a slow time and have an off season. We don't have that, yeah. which is a good thing. But at the same time, sometimes things get away from you, and we're able to kind of. Uh, pull back together as a group, uh, really get organized, get cleaned up, get the building ready for when we did open. And now the, the really neat thing is we are coming back online well before most buildings in the country. And, and I think that for some major markets, um, even close to home, it could be potentially yeah. 2021 before they have their first event. Where here we are in June, we have 28 events scheduled. July, we have another 20-something. August, I think we have 40-something events. That's awesome. Um, so it gives us a great opportunity um, to get some potential shows earlier than other buildings uh, because these artists, they want to play. Uh, they're just like the rest of us. They want to get back to work. Uh, they want to get back to their normal lives. So um, they're interested. So we're right now, you know, working with a lot of different artists and groups to see what we can do uh, for the near future um, and, you know, play in front of maybe a smaller crowd or a crowd that would normally be on a half house scale mm -hmm. is now a full house scale, but with half the seats so that we can would you just spread alternate, people up. Just alternate people? Yeah, it's a seats? pretty much alternating system. Um, we have it all mapped out where we can fit about 1,250 to 1,500 people uh, safely with, with good social distancing practices in place. And, you know, as you know from a lot of the shows we hold, 
1,500 people is our, uh, yeah. probably our normal crowd and where we can be successful. We just try to put in half the arena where now we'll spread it out. Um, there's some other cool concepts we're working on, so stay tuned. I think we're close on um, announcing some really um, awesome partnerships and I some great one ideas. I know really cool. And uh, I'm just I'm hoping it all comes together. I think we're really close, so stay tuned for that. And um, a lot of neat things, I and mean, it just gives us some room to grow. And I think like everyone's business during this time, you have to adapt because it's not going to be the same now or in the future. Um, so take the time now to figure out how you're going to need to do it to be successful going forward. And I, I think we got a good plan together. If somebody, coach, is so excited for watching us, they want to jump on right now. Give me, <laughs> get what's the phone number? Well, you know, five eight zero two nine seven zero seven six three. My, I finally memorized. <laughs> got it that. memorized. Um, <laughs> But really reach out to us privately on Facebook, uh, Twitter. That type of thing is also an easy way to directly communicate. Uh, you can chat with us on our, our website, um, our email, info at Oklahoma Flying Aces. Any and all of those ways, reach out to Kevin, his yeah. staff, the building. We, gosh, they know everything we know. They, um, we work with him directly. I, I would say um, encourage everyone also, all of our season ticket holders, all of our fans, and even those who haven't found a, a way to come to the game yet. I would also ask, this is an unprecedented time for all of us. We want to come out of this better, bigger, stronger. Hey, if you've got a suggestion that you think something we can do better, give us, shoot us a, a message, shoot us a private message. We'll visit with you because we want that input. We want that communication. We need that. Um, and then we're going to go try to get uh, get this thing uh, really ramped up this year and do a better job of staying consistent, staying out there with everybody and reaching out. But it begins today. So, Kevin Brisky, Coach Richard Davis, the flight plan starts today. The 2021 season is just around the corner. We'd love to have you on board with us with the Oklahoma Flying Aces.